Hello and welcome to an extra spooky episode of Scotland Shop on the Sofa. For this chilling episode we bring you the hauntings of Scottish castles. From some of the most famous castles come some truly shocking tales that will chill you to the bone. From broken romances to family issues, the castle walls hold a lot of stories. But do they hold the spirits of the dead? Ooh. Whether you're a sceptic or a believer, these stories will send a shiver down your spine. So get some snacks, turn off the lights, and let's explore some Scottish hauntings. Over the past few months, we've learned about a few castles and their unwanted, suspicious floating figures. And we thought we would start with the one that left us with goosebumps. A few episodes ago, we were exploring all things Clan Armstrong and discovered the gruesome story of Hermitage Castle. The castle is also known as the guard house of the bloodiest valley in Britain, which helps us set the scene perfectly. While many paranormal investigators claim there are many spirits tormented at Hermitage Castle, the one that is most active is the ghost of William de Sulis. The story goes that de Sulis dabbled in black magic and was thought to be responsible for the disappearance of local children. Already a bad start in our gruesome story. He made many enemies in his life and made very questionable decisions. But his fate was decided when he abducted an Armstrong maid. Fueled with anger, the fearsome border clan stormed Hermitage Castle and rescued the damsel. However, they decided to forgive the Sulis. A huge mistake. Later, the Sulis invited the clan chief back to the castle to seek forgiveness, but he had a more sinister plan up his sleeve. Once the Armstrong clan chief arrived at the castle, de Sulis murdered him in cold blood. As you can imagine, the Armstrong clan decided to seek revenge. They returned to Hermitage and boiled de Sulis in molten lead. A grisly end undeniably, but it's hard to feel such sympathy after hearing of all his treacherous acts. Many who visit the castle claim to see his apparition roam aimlessly through the corridors and hear the cries of his young innocent victims echo through the decaying castle. Yep, we told you this one was gruesome and we definitely wouldn't expect anything less from a border weaver clan like Armstrong. I would like to go, but I'm a little bit scared. Yeah, I'm a bit scared <laughs> as well. Definitely go through the daytime, even with a torch. <clears throat> no, that seems scarier. I, I, no. no, daytime, absolutely. <laughs> Our next spooky tale takes place in the walls of Inverary Castle, particularly the MacArthur Room. The castle has been home to the Duke of Argyll and the Clan Campbell seat since the 18th century. Our story begins in 1644, when the Duke was forced to leave the castle to avoid capture by the Marquis of Montrose. When he fled his home, he left behind a young boy who had been employed as a harpist. When the poor boy was discovered by the Marquis's men, they slaughtered the young boy and left his body on the Duke's bed. Despite this gruesome tale taking place in the old castle, it is thought that the boy's spirit attached itself to the bed. The bed was then taken from the old castle to the new. And what's more, legend goes that when a member of the Duke's family is going to die, harp music can be heard coming from the MacArthur room, the room where the bed is placed. If that doesn't give you chills, then we don't know what will. Gives me yeah, 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 every time I see it. Hi, here's the sign on No, thank you. While the ghost harpist is the most prominent spirit in the castle, it's not the only one. A grey lady is rumoured to haunt the grounds, but can only be seen by the Duke's daughter. A fight frightful fate to see such a mysterious figure floating past. An eerie laugh can be heard reverberating in the kitchens. It is thought to be a mischievous housemaid who taunt visitor, taunts visitors and sends them on their way. Unfortunately, our ghost tales don't stop there. A short journey away lies in Verary Jail, and it is said to be one of the most haunted locations in Scotland. A visitor snapped a pic that had created many questions amongst the paranormal community. While many skeptics suggest a smudge on the lens, it cannot be denied that other unexplained activities suggest a more paranormal occurrence. Visitors claim to feel uneasy, unsettled, and even feel touches on their backs. In more recent years, voices have been picked up on paranormal equipment. It's definitely a place to visit if the spirit world piques your interest. Onwards now to Dunrobin Castle, where the tale of broken heart still echoes throughout the castle centuries later. Dunrobin was home to the Sutherland family since the 13th century and our tragic story begins with the 14th Earl of Sutherland's daughter, Margaret. 
As the eligible young woman, she was promised to the son of another Earl. However, Margaret had other plans. Her heart had already been stolen by Jamie Gunn, a stable boy. And we're probably sure that you can see where this is going, but we better tell you this fateful tale anyway. Margaret's father didn't approve of Jamie and he was banished from the land. In his anger, the Earl locked the daughter in the room in the tower, but this didn't stop love. Jamie climbed to the tower and reached poor Margaret. They devised a plan to use a rope to climb out of the tower. This would have been the perfect fairy tale ending for the pair if it hadn't been for the Earl discovering their escape while Margaret had begun her descent down the rope. He demanded that his daughter return, but Margaret could not imagine a life without her Jamie and let go of the rope. She then plummeted to her tragic death. Reports say her crying can still be heard near the room in the tower. Yeah, the things you do for love. Yeah, not sure I would <laughs> go that far. <laughs> <laughs> what a tragic tale of a broken heart. Unfortunately, many Scottish ca castles are home to doomed love affairs. Our next haunted castle has a similar story with an even more tragic ending, if you can believe it. Crathis Castle is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful castles in Scotland, but a dark, sinister secret once lay beneath the fireplace. It's widely believed that there is a mysterious ghostly presence who walks the halls of Crathis Castle now known as the Green Lady. Nobody is sure who exactly this young woman was, but one popular story alleges that she was one of the Burnett Laird's daughters. It is thought that the girl had an illicit relationship with a stable boy and became pregnant. Hmm. She hid her condition for as long as possible, but was unable to conceal what ha had happened any longer after she gave birth. Supposedly her father flew into a rage and soon after the girl and the baby both disappeared. Whilst many say this is unlikely, in the 1800s renovations took place in the castle and the workmen discovered the bones of a baby beneath the fireplace. This makes this awful tale a lot more probable and many visitors report sightings of a green lady and her sorrowed baby. Let's travel to the grounds of Craigie Bar Castle, a beautiful scene that was once the inspiration for Walt Disney's Cinderella. Although the castle has now a relatively peaceful existence, it has had its turbulent history and unsurprisingly has seen many clan battles and feuds. Within the walls of Craigie Bar lives the ghost of an unfortunate fiddler who fell into the castle well and drowned. It is not known if he was pushed or if it was merely a tragic accident, but it is likely that foul play was involved. Guests have claimed to be woken by the sound of an eerie violin. While castle staff have searched the castle numerous times, the mystery has never been solved. Is it the spirit of a fiddler who is roaming the ground playing his fiddle for the castle guests? One well-known chilling story occurs at Stirling Castle. This mighty fortress sits on a volcanic core and oversees the city. It was originally built to protect the river force from oncoming armies and it was home to some of the Stuart kings and queens. Our story is certainly interesting yet topical to Tartan. As you walk around the castle, you will likely come across a ghostly Highlander. He's dressed in the full regalia and wears a kilt. Unfortunately, we don't know which tartan he dons. Not for lack of trying. <laughs> Many visitors mistake him for a fun tour guide. However, he quickly disappears when they approach him for directions, leaving them stunned and confused. There's no confirmed story as to who he may be or what his story is, but he certainly likes to make himself known to all. This next tale of murder and betrayal is sure to send shivers down your spine. Bybee Castle is home to a mysterious green lady. Another one. Another one. <laughs> Known as Lilias Drummond. The legend says that Lilias and her husband Alexander were longing for a son. After five daughters, Alexander grew impatient and decided to kill his wife. Thanks. Brutal. <laughs> he locked her away and then he starved her to death. His attention then quickly turned to his late wife's cousin, Grisel. It is rumoured that on the night of Alexander and Grisel's wedding, the eerie shrieks of Lilias could be heard coming from outside their window. When Alexander opened the window the next day, he was shocked to see the name D. Lilias Drummond freshly carved into the stone. Spooky, right? What's even more spooky is that the name can still be seen today. Her ghost is said to still roam the corridors and wail the betrayal of her husband and it is believed that she leaves behind the scent of rose petals in her wake. That's a bit random, isn't it? Very random, but quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, we feel kind of at peace. Again, another story of heartbreak, doom romance, and of course, an awful husband. 
Our next fateful story is of a grieving ghost which takes place at Nagpath Castle in Peebles, not too far from Scotland Shop headquarters. So we hope she doesn't pay us a visit anytime soon. Jean Douglas was the only daughter of the Earl of March and therefore it was vital that she marry for status and wealth. But our lovely Jean had already fallen for a simple borders man. Like most tragic love stories, her father decided he was not good enough to marry his only daughter. Jean was heartbroken and quickly became ill, most likely with a broken heart. And the illness was cruel and quick and she began to become frail and lose herself. Her father decided to call for the young boarder in the hope that it would make his daughter well again. The young man arrived at the castle and peered inside for a glimpse of his love, but he did not recognise Jean, who had been changed by her illness and he rode off. Jean could not come to terms with the heartbreak and she died of grief. Her ghost still haunts the castle to this day. She is said to be disturbed by the sound of joy and she apparently throws tantrums for at least three days. Which is pretty weird considering there's lots of weddings. Yeah, <laughs> weddings and there. celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say I have recently been to the castle and I didn't have a spooky encounter with Jean. Perhaps I should be very thankful. I think you should. <laughs> yeah. We sure it comes as no surprise that our final castle home to some spooky activities is Edinburgh Castle. The castle was a fortress for over 800 years and is still a military base today. At one time it was also a prison. It is said that it is likely that the castle is home to many displaced spirits and perhaps some mischievous ghosts. There are numerous mysterious stories that come from Edinburgh Castle. One particularly jarring one is the tale of the desperate prisoner. In the 18th century, a prisoner hid in a dung barrel, hoping to be carried out down the Royal Mile and escape imprisonment. It's quite desperate to be. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. However, the dung barrel was actually tipped down the rocky slopes of the castle and the man tumbled to his death. A horrible ending. Or was it his ending? A ghost has been reported to shove and push visitors from the battlements and is accompanied with a strong smell of dung. It is claimed that this is the desperate prisoner seeking revenge. Another eerie ghost account that comes from Edinburgh Castle is one of a small drummer boy. In 1650, Oliver Cromwell's men were laying siege to the castle and stopped in their tracks when they heard the faint sound of drums. Upon finding the source, they were shocked to see the drummer was headless. It is thought he only appears when the castle is under attack, perhaps why no one alive has seen the apparition. The castle is home to many other spirits, but we would be here all day telling their stories. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. Although there are more castles with ghostly presences. Remember to join us for our next episode of Scotland Shop on the Sofa. We promise it won't have as many ghosts, but there still may be one or two that sneak their way in, of course. We hope you enjoyed this episode and let us know if you've had any spooky encounters at Scottish castles in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and social media.